October 1914, the North Atlantic. The Royal Navy orders seven of its most modern battleships out to sea. Among them is the newly built HMS Audacious. Although the First World War is now in its fourth month, the sea north of Ireland is believed safe. The Navy's most powerful fighting ships outclass every other vessel afloat and are considered unsinkable. Battleships were then the most technologically advanced machines ever devised. Whoever rules the waves rules the world. Britain and Germany are engaged in a deadly race to build ever more powerful battleships. The day when these giants of the sea will clash draws ever closer. German U-boats start to sink ships and mine laying begins. The challenge is to get close to British and Irish shores undetected. The ship chosen is a liner, the 17,000 ton SMS Berlin. A task to lay minefields off Scotland. In charge of the covert mission is Captain Hans Fundheller. The Berlin is ordered to mine the entrance to the River Clyde, one of Britain's busiest waterways. 21st October 1914. Radio traffic indicates the presence of many enemy ships. I have to change course frequently. Neue course 200 cut. Neue course 500 cut. 22nd October 1914. Meldung an den Kapitän auf der Brücke. An enemy warship on patrol comes unpleasantly close. Facing discovery and the certain loss of his ship, Fundheller comes up with a new plan. Contrary to his orders, he will lay his mines off Ireland across the main shipping lanes from North America. Meldung an das Achterdeck, Minen fertig machen zum Werfen. Jawohl. Prepare all 200 mines and rig the mine discharge racks. Action stations. Spaced some 100 yards apart over 10 nautical miles, the trap is laid. On the 26th of October, 1914, the Manchester Commerce is en route for Canada, carrying general cargo. She has no idea what she is about to sail into. She runs straight into one of the Berlin's mines. The crew rush to escape the ship. Only one lifeboat gets away. Within seven minutes, she sinks, drowning her captain and 13 others. The survivors are not picked up for hours. The news of the mining does not reach the Royal Navy. Did this lack of intelligence prove fatal to the audacious? The morning of the 27th of October, 1914, seven super dreadnoughts put to sea from the Isle of Mull for gunnery practice. Third in line, commanded by Captain Cecil Dampier, is the audacious. The rendezvous point is 30 miles north of the coast of Ireland. Captain Dampier and his ship's company are unaware that only hours earlier, less than a mile south, the cargo vessel Manchester Commerce struck a mine. The battleships turn to aim at their targets. Come about 165 degrees. Come about 165 degrees. At 10 to 9, an explosion deep below the waterline on the port side, towards the stern, rocks the audacious. At first, the captain thinks a gun has discharged prematurely. He soon learns that the detonation is far more serious. Captain Dampier orders all watertight doors and hatches to be closed. 
the battleship slowly limps towards sanctuary in Ireland. Two hours after the explosion, she is dead in the water. The crew on Audacious desperately try to stem the flow, but as the quarterdeck at the stern becomes a wash, boats and gangways smash into vents and hatches, and water starts pouring into the decks below. Pipe work leaks, doors buckle, bulkheads give way, boilers, generators and pumps stop working. Unexpectedly, over the horizon appears one of the largest transatlantic liners in the world, the SS Olympic, sister ship to the Titanic. She is carrying passengers en route from the United States to the UK, and some of those with cameras take these photographs. The fascinated audience on the Olympic obtains a unique record of the battleship's last moments. Dampier orders all non-essential personnel off. After the last man abandons ship at quarter past six that evening, the audacious still takes two more hours to slowly fill. At quarter to nine, top heavy, she rises by the bow and turns turtle. For 15 minutes, the battleship lies upside down on the surface. Suddenly, a gigantic blast tears through her. Captain Dampier was reported to have said that the cruiser he was on was lifted by the explosion. The unexpected end of the audacious sends shockwaves throughout the Royal Navy. The authorities immediately order a news blackout. The crew of the audacious, who all survived, are sworn to secrecy and reassigned. The Olympic is detained, her passengers are searched, and any photos found are confiscated. In a final effort to deceive the Germans, the Navy fit a cargo vessel with a wooden superstructure and guns to pass it off as the audacious. A simple mine hitting the world's most powerful battleship eventually turns her over and leads to her fiery end. If only Fundheller had known. On his return to Germany, he is severely reprimanded for his failure to complete his mission as ordered. He is never given command again. HMS Audacious is the only British battleship of her class lost in the First World War. <laughs>